Today we're going to use one of Clo's newest tools to create a flat lay. A flat lay is simply an image shot directly from above, a bird's eye view of an array of carefully arranged objects. This example is our final outcome. We will be using the Fold 3D Garment tool in the 3D window to fold the jacket, the sweater, the blouse, and the jeans. We will discuss the other items after we have folded those four garments. Let's get started. To begin with, I'm just going to have my 3D window open. I'm not going to need to see the patterns in my 2D window. First, I'm going to load my jacket and I have saved all of the garments that I am going to be using as garments so that I can get just the uh, pieces in individually. I'm going to add the jacket to the workspace to begin with. Whether you're importing from a garment or a project file, you should only be importing one garment at a time because the fold tool in the 3D window is going to affect all garments. So I'm going to come here in my 3D toolbar and select Fold 3D Garment All Patterns. I then get this tool up here, this toolbar that has all the options for folding the 3D garment. This first tool is called Rotate Axis. I'm going to start by clicking this and my garment is now going to be sent to the ground and it is on its back. If I click the next tool, it's going to flip it horizontally so that it is face down. The next tool is, is the Optimize Garment Resolution. This will look similar to your high and low res garment buttons with a particle distance and collision thicknesses for this particular, this particular garment and the folding. I'm going to click OK. Next is the button for Set Physical Property for Spreading. This is going to add, similar to the Strengthen option, some stiffness to your garment so that if I simulate it here, it will fall and spread out a little bit. This is going to help us so that our pattern pieces lay very flat. As you can see, the arms are flattening nicely and the bottom is also flattening nicely. I'm going to stop simulation. I like to flip it over again and simulate again so that it flattens out on both sides. You may also notice that I have an internal line here that has a fold angle applied to it. I'm going to remove that at a later point so that it will lay better. I'm going to go back one more time and flip horizontally. And I'm going to click this button here, which is to set the physical property for folding. And when I simulate now, my jacket will fall further to the ground and lay flatter. If you want, you can go back and forth a couple times so that the you can go back and forth between the spreading and the folding options here to get your jacket to lay perfectly flat or as flat as, as you would like. I have put my jacket face down because I am just going to fold my jacket in half so that it looks like it did in the picture at the beginning. I am now ready to fold this. I'm going to select the Fold tool here after I have changed back to the Folding properties. Click the Fold tool. I need to click twice on either side of the garment along the axis where I want to fold. 
When I do that, I will get this gizmo, which looks similar to the fold gizmo for the fold arrangement tool. I'm then simply going to fold this over until it is flat and simulate while it's simulating just like we can on the avatar we can we can nudge it in places to drape it a little bit i'm going to flip it one more time because this is how i'm going to want it to be in the final flat lay and i'm going to simulate one more time to get my pattern pieces to lay flat as this has buttons here is where i could bring back my 2d window and I could select my buttons here and reset the 3D position here so that they are laying flat. And this is now where I could remove this internal line that has the fold angle applied to it. So now when I simulate again, not only are my buttons laying better, but my, fold, my folded line is gone. To proceed with this whole the whole flat lay presentation, what I'm going to now do is save this as a garment as well. So I'm going to call this jacket folded and place that in there. Next is our sweater vest. As you can see, I've imported it, I've put it to the ground, I have changed the garment resolution, I have applied the strengthening the properties for spreading i'm going to uh, flip it here and simulate a second time so that the front is flattened i am now going to go to apply the physical properties for folding and i'm going to again use the same fold tool this fold is going to take more than one fold because i would like to be have the sides folded in and the bottom folded under so what i like to do here is get close to it so that i can see the grid that is going on here and i'm going to be sure to to take note of where i am in the grid on each side okay so i'm going to click here and click here as you can see i'm about a um, a square and a third from the middle line. I'm going to fold this half in. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, trying to get them both folded equally. If you go too far, simply make sure that you are still holding on to your fold tool. Stop and simulate and then I'm going to turn to the side and make note of the length here of both sides here I have four squares here I have a little over three and a half um, about at the middle here is probably good now ultimately I'm going to end up with the front folded up so that's what I'm going to do is fold this so that the front is in fact folded up and simulate. You can continue to make folds and you can flip the garment to flatten out the front and the back. Um, you could add uh, tacks here to help hold the edges down if you would like. Uh, I'm going to, for this uh, moment, leave this as is and simulate just to make sure that it's okay. And again, I'm going to save this as a garment. Our third garment is our jeans. As you can see, we're already here on the ground. Some garments can be a little bit difficult at times depending upon their construction. Sometimes it's good to go out of the tool and do some simulating to let things lay flat so that you can better understand how these are going to look. So if you turn off the uh, the physical properties for spreading and you work a little bit um, with getting your garments to lay flat this may give you some better results it is also an option 
that you could add internal lines on sides where things need to fold flat and put a fold angle on there that is going to help you with that. I think I'm going to be okay based on how I know I'm going to fold this. The other thing that I could do is I could bring out my 2D window here and if I wanted to I could remove internal pockets that we're not really going to see from the top. So I'm going to go back into my um, into my fold tool. I'm going to flip this over and simulate again to get this to lay flat. I am going to be folding this uh, into thirds so that the pocket um, will be showing. Now I'm going to use my fold tool and I'm still using the same fold tool for the moment. I'm going to fold down the center here first. I'm going to fold this up and this is how I want my I'm going to want one of the pockets up so that I can see the back pockets. I'm going to simulate to get the two halves to fold together. And I can do this either in thirds or in half depending upon the effect that I want. I'm just going to fold this in half. Again, I'm going to take note of how many squares here on the ground so that I can get an idea of where I will need to fold this. I have about uh, four and a half and here I have about five and a half. So I'm going to start here. Don't go too far. Go just far enough so that it's folded and then simulate to let the garment settle. And again, save it as a garment. Finally, we have the blouse. And I'm all ready to go here. I've flipped it. I've simulated a couple times. Uh, I'm ready to fold. This is going to take us using both of the fold tools here. The first fold tool is the tool that we have used already here in what we've done so far. And I'm going to fold over one half of this to begin with. Here's my fold tool. I'm going to position myself so I can see the grid. And I'm going to fold just this one side to start. Now, the current fold tool that we, were, we are using, we can't use to fold over the sleeves because it's going to select the whole garment. We need to use this tool here for fold selected. And what you need to do is select all the parts that you want to fold. In this case, my sleeve has actually four parts. One half of the sleeve, the cuff. If I rotate under, I also have the other half of the sleeve and the placket on the cuff. Once I have selected the four pieces or any number of pieces that I want to fold, I have to press enter or return on my keyboard as it says on my cursor. This is now going to allow me to fold just the sleeve. And I'm doing this, the sleeve in this way, because I would like to fold the sleeve back around the front of my garment. And now I'm going to fold the other sleeve. I'm sorry, the other side of the shirt. I'm not going to fold the sleeve in the same way, but I am going to fold it back a little bit so it lies nice. Again, I have to select all parts of the sleeve. Press return on my keyboard. And then I can fold just this sleeve back over. If you fold it and it's not to your liking, you can simply undo Control or Command Z and it will go back. And you can select it again. 
And you can keep going back until you are happy with the way that it has folded visually. And so now when I simulate, this will fall a little bit further straight down. And as it's falling, I will just tug it so that it lays within the fold there of the shirt. And finally, I can fold the sleeve back up. Now here, because the sleeve is not overlapping any other part of the garment, I can use the regular fold tool and fold this up. Now that we have all the garments folded, we can put it all together. What I've done here is I've created a pattern piece, a large pattern piece, and I have applied a wood texture to it. I've then added to it the normal map and changed the type, the material type to leather. The reason I do this is that it gives me the ability to then have some sense of reflection to it. The next thing is that we simply need to add our garments to our 3D window. So here is my blouse, here is my jacket, my jeans, and my sweater. And I have a couple other things I'm going to add in here that is going to allow us to complete our entire presentation. I'm simply going to hover over each one in my library right click and say add to workspace. I'm going to just add it at 000 in the middle and then I will move it once it's placed in here. I'm simply then going to import the other three garments. So there are the four garments that we just folded in the previous part of the video. What I'm going to do here while these are, are the only garments in here is I am actually going to freeze this pattern piece that's my floor. I'm simply going to turn on simulation to get the four garments to drop to the floor so that I can make sure that the effect is as it should be. Then in my custom view here, I already have a custom view saved, which was a snapshot of right above my entire flat lay. And now I'm going to add in some other pieces, some other things here that are going to help with the entire layout. I have a scarf, a very large scarf that I have simply folded in quarters. I have a pair of gloves that I'm just bringing in as a, I'm bringing the garment in. It is not folded in any way. And then I have a pair of shoes that I have also saved as a garment and these are frozen as well in the project so i'm going to add this to the workspace so that we have a pair of shoes that we're looking at from the top and the final two pieces are something that i have created in clo the bag i have created in clo the glasses were created in, in a third party application I'm going to bring these in. These are actually saved as avatars or objects, and I'm going to bring them in as an avatar so that they can complete our overall visual.